Okay, so I don't know if you watched the debate last night on the BBC. It was presented as a challenger's debate. Um, I didn't see it live, but I watched it just on BBC iPlayer uh, now. Um, interesting. Uh, certainly some interesting exchanges took place. Um, one thing that was notable was the absence of Nick Clegg and the Liberal Democrats. He dismissed that today saying it was just a shower. Um, I'm still not quite sure if that was because he didn't want to take part or the BBC just hadn't bothered inviting him. I've heard the latter is the case. And if that is true, then it is, um, I think, disgraceful because it's just a snub against a party that is an opposition party. It's true that the Liberal Democrats have formed part of the governing coalition, but they're going into this election as as the Liberal Democrats, as an independent party. Whatever you think of the Lib Dems, it seems very unfair to exclude them. Um, whereas smaller parties like Clyde, the Greens and the SNP get propped up in two debates. So to me, that seems unfair. Um, and you could for that matter. So that's the uh, parties that were represented in this. Labour is obviously Her Majesty's opposition. It's the largest opposition party. Uh, Miliband is the only candidate there with a realistic chance of becoming prime minister. And the others knew that there was a perception that they were gang up on him. Um, that didn't quite happen. Um, the other parties were the SNP, Scottish National Party, for my international viewers. They want an independent Scotland. Um, that is their fundamental goal. Plaid Comru is a Welsh Nationalist Party. They want an independent Wales, although they're much smaller than the SNP. Um, and the Green Party, which has a central focus on the environment, but they have been widely dismissed by detractors as loony left. Uh, and UKIP, which is the United Kingdom Independence Party, they're probably, along with the SNP, the best known of the smaller parties. Um, again, Northern, Northern Irish representation, which is uh, which is notable. Um, I'm not going to talk about this debate inside out because it was a one and a half hour debate, so there was a lot of issues covered, but a few notable things happened. Firstly, um, one of the most reported sort of incidents, let's say, was during a debate on the NHS. Uh, I think it was in that segment. Nigel Farage, it was about maybe one quarter, one third into the debate. Nigel Farage actually turned around uh, on the audience and he said this is a very left wing audience. Um, in an, uh, something along the lines of predictably the BBC is left wing bias, this sort of thing. That didn't go down too well. Um, and then he actually went further and said the real audience is at home. Now, this is something I've noticed about UKIP a few times. And uh, I've sort of a balanced view on this because on one hand, I see where he's coming from. I do believe that there is um, some signs that there is a bias against right wing opinions from BBC audiences. And... David Imbleby sort of interceded this and he said, Mr. Farage, this is an independently selected audience from ICM. But it's been pointed out that ICM works for The Guardian, um, which is not exactly a neutral source. Um, I shouldn't say works for The Guardian, but is aligned to The Guardian. Um, the truth is, whatever debate you're going to have, I think there's going to be some people saying that it's biased. I mean, if it was a debate on Sky News, then left-wing parties would say it was biased. So UKIP, frankly, needs to grow up a little bit and stop constantly whinging. Because for one thing, actually, I looked at the whole debate and there were people who clapped Nigel Farage at several points. And ironically, two of the audience members who seemed to agree with Nigel Farage were both black people. There was a young black woman who seemed to agree that we need a nuclear deterrent. That is a position that both UKIP and Labour have. And there is a black man who seemed to take a, a centre-right view on immigration. So for that, for Nigel Farage to just dismiss the whole audience is a bit, frankly, it's not very um, statesmanlike. You know, um, whilst I, I've sort of defended UKIP a few times, insofar as there's a constant negative um, coverage of, of their campaign, on the other hand, I think UKIP needs to accept that if they really want to be a significant political party in British politics, they have to stop winning, quite frankly.
because every political party gets its detractors. Every political party gets criticism. I mean, look at the way the Tory press talk about Labour. They constantly refer to Red Ed. What, what does UKIP have to say about that? So on one hand, it's unfair to constantly brand them racist. On the other hand, UKIP need to grow up a little bit because there's, there's frankly, uh, there's a sort of reactionary impulse that Nigel Farage has every time he is questioned, which is, oh, it's biased. Like, how dare you ask me tough questions? I'm sorry, Nigel, but you want, you're the leader of a political party that is growing in this country. You need to answer tough questions. Um, it seems almost even when people agree with Nigel, he still complains, um, which is somewhat strange. Um, so what I would say in regards to UKIP's coverage is some of the allegations made against them are um, a bit unfair. Um, I don't think UKIP is outright a racist party. Um, but, you know, different political parties have different views on immigration. And Nigel Farage cannot just constantly dismiss that and say that other views are invalid. Just as his view is valid, so are other views. Um, and actually, the the position that the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrat Party and the Conservative Party have taken on immigration, from my perspective, has been a balanced one. It isn't an open door policy. Um, Nick Clegg has said that we do need, in fact, Nick Clegg has called for tougher border controls. So Nigel Farage is sort of presenting this picture as, oh, they all want open door immigration. They're doing a fair bit of distortion themselves. Um, so I, I, it's not very, I don't think Farage sometimes comes across as a particularly professional leader. There's times he makes good points, but then he ruins it by having these sort of tantrums, basically. And, you know, after the programme, he had a rant about the BBC being biased. But, you know, um, if you look at the audience, yes, there was signs that there was a left-wing bias, but I don't agree that every single person in the audience was against UKIP. Like I say, uh, the two black people that were questioned seemed to take positions that were in favour of at least sent the right ideas. Um, so UKIP needs to stop constantly whinging. Because if they really want to be a party of government, they have to accept that they're going to have to face tough questions. On the other hand, um, those who criticise them also need to be responsible. Um, and I think Labour has done that, actually. I think Ed Miliband has been pragmatic in terms of immigration because he said, look, I recognise that people have legitimate concerns and it's not just based on prejudice. So that is showing me that Labour is starting to take this seriously. And they've got it wrong in the past. They're starting to take it seriously. Um, there's other left-wing parties like the Greens who are basically out of touch. Um, some things are striking in this. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon, again, uh, whilst I have contempt for what her party's central goal is, which is a breakup of this country, and I've spoken about um, how I'm very wary of the, some of the tactics that Scottish nationalists use, I have to say on a personal level, I I think she's quite a decent leader. I, I really, although I'm a unionist, I couldn't attack her personally. I think she's quite a practical leader. I'm not talking necessarily in policy area. I'm talking purely in terms of delivery. And she's a very skilled politician. She's a lot stronger than the other two women on that stage. Um, the weakest leader there is, to me, Leanne Wood, because she just regurgitates the same things over and over again. When she's challenged on points, she completely ignores them. She just doesn't strike me as a particularly strong leader. Natalie Bennett, I've not much time for her party. Um, I think in the debate, she comes across stronger than in some of her interviews. And definitely the Greens have some good compassionate policies. I'll give them that. But they also have policies that are so far out that they're just not... Um, I think on too many areas, they are out of touch. Um, by the way, on the issue of Trident, Nicola Sturgeon made a good balanced response. She said she's against Trident, but she supports the use of conventional weapons. Now, presumably, she's talking about UK-wide. She mentioned this country a few times. Presumably, she's talking about the UK. Um, Ed Miliband supports the retention of Trident, and he mentioned some of the threats facing the world. Um, the Am Wood didn't even bother talking about defence, and I think that showed an incredible lack of judgment. 
Um, Natalie Bennett touched on it, but to me, um, you know, Putin must be laughing at the likes of the Greens and Ply Komru if he is thinking this is the people who might one day be leading the United Kingdom. Um, I mean, frankly, in areas like that, they come across as utterly woefully naive. Um, I understand the point that Natalie Bennett is making, that we need to use our military for things like UN peacekeeping um, and defence. But Ed Miliband is also right to say that in this world, there are unpredictable forces. And Nigel Farage has also said this. That, to me, seems level-headed. And it's what the Liberal Democrats are proposing. I think they've got the best approach on Trident, which is we're going to scale it back, but we're not going to abandon it completely. There will be a nuclear deterrent, but we're going to set an example for the rest of the world by scaling it back. That seems practical to me. Um, Trident currently costs $100 billion. The Tories, UKIP and Labour want to retain it completely. And it seems to me the best approach is not to scrap it completely, which would be reckless, but to scale it down. Rather than scaling the army down to 82,000, scale Trident down. In other words, we would still have enough nuclear warheads to act as a deterrent, but we would be saving something, let's say we scale it down 25%. Then we can save £20 billion, pounds, which could go to the NHS or education. So to me, that really makes sense. Um, and I really feel, and I'm sure I'll mention this again before the election, it's a great pity that people are writing off the Lib Dems because actually the platform they are offering is level-headed, centrist, pragmatic. And they're writing them off and they're ridiculing them because, basically, ultimately, because of tuition fees. Anyway, I'm not going to talk too much about that because I'm going to make a video specifically about the Lib Dems. Um, what else can I say about that debate? Um, again, on the bias issue, there was evidence, there was an indication of a left-wing bias, but I would say that you can't keep using that as an excuse because they have to accept that they need to be challenged on important issues. And I would say to UKIP supporters, what exactly do you want? Do you want an audience that is entirely pro-UKIP? You know, it works both ways. If you're saying there's a bias against UKIP, my question would be, well, what, what exactly do you want? Do you want an audience that is entirely pro-UKIP? Because that is not an accurate picture of all British views. It's not. And there is an arrogance among UKIP supporters, some of them, that every single British person agrees with their sort of mindset. Actually, no, they don't. I reckon most British people have a roughly centrist outlook. I reckon most British people, when they really, really think about it, would be aligned somewhere along the lines of Liberal Democrat policies. But unfortunately, <laughs> the Dems have been so ridiculed that um, I just think it's a great pity. Because people are overlooking the policies and just focusing on character and that only oh, Clegg's a liar, we're not going to support them, without actually looking at the policies. And it's a great pity. Um, I'll just say a few more things. Um, yeah, regarding the Greens, well, I might make a separate video about them. I guess that's it really for the debate. Um, okay, let me know your thoughts if you watch the debate.